The following is presented by the Computer History Archives Project. Univac 1 Components The following points are worth noting to understand the Univac 1 basic design. The foundation of Univac's construction was the system chassis. These were plug-in modules about 2 feet long, weighing about 8 pounds each. They usually held between 10 and 30 vacuum tubes, depending on their function. Modules often contained from 50 to over 100 hand-soldered connections for resistors, capacitors, tube sockets, and other components. Every module was labeled with its serial number and its intended location within the CPU. Tube Types Of the Univax 5200 tubes, the most common type was the 25L6. Remington Rand did not make all of its own tubes. Various manufacturers were used, and it was common practice for tube makers to rebrand tubes made by others. Tube Modules This module is a recirculation chassis. It measures 23 and 1 half inches long by 5 and 1 half inches high. Some modules have suffered considerable corrosion over time. Thyrotrons. This module contains several thyrotrons under different brand names. A thyrotron is a gas filled tube used as a switch and controlled rectifier for high voltage. Some tubes have manufactured date codes. This one shows 1948. The memory tank was the principal internal storage providing 1,000-word acoustic delay line memory. There were seven large memory tanks. Each large memory tank consisted of two concentric cylinders. The inner tank was made of stainless steel and contained the column of mercury used in common by all the channels in the tank. Each of the large memory tanks was surrounded by 18 attached modules. Other tube modules were located in groups of 12 in each section. The enclosure, known as the box, was over 8 feet high, 8 feet deep, and over 14 feet wide. Three sections formed a bay, and 13 bays made up the sides of the CPU enclosure. Several technicians could work inside the CPU at one time. A door in the side of the univac opens into a small room in which the maze of wiring is completely accessible to the engineers who are carefully checking to see that every circuit performs as it should. Inside the computer are also seven large cylinders which are the high-speed mercury tank memories. These store the digits of information which the computer must have immediately handy for use in the middle of a problem. Each of these cylinders can store almost 2,000 numbers or letters of the alphabet. Any such number can be found by the machine in less than a thousandth of a second. The vacuum tubes on the outside of the computer are easily removable since they are mounted on chassis which can be taken out for inspection. A closer look at the supervisory control board will show us the many switches the operator uses to listen in on different parts of the computer. Here also are the signal lamps, which indicate whether the machine is functioning correctly. Not only are the arithmetic operations thoroughly checked, but the temperature of the mercury in the memories is controlled, and the lights which are flashing here indicate that these control circuits are working properly. Capacitors, resistors, and other components identified in the tube modules included Dumont Sangamo Dublier
Sprague. Clevite. Transitron. Radel. And Electra. Module Name Plates. Examining 10 individual tube modules, we found three different name plates, reflecting the evolution of the company. The first makes no mention of Remington Rand, likely making it the earliest in the manufacturing process. Service Life Univac 1 computers were in service for many years. The Census Bureau's two machines lasted 12 years and 9 years. The Case Institute of Technology in Cleveland retained an operational Univac 1 until 1965. Sperry Rand itself used two systems until 1968. Life and Casualty Insurance of Tennessee had two machines, which were the last running Univac 1 machines anywhere in the world until taken offline permanently in 1970. The first 1103 was delivered in September 1953. The pluggable units helped with maintenance and diagnostics. Early models used electrostatic memory CRTs. Over 3,900 vacuum tubes and 5,000 diodes were also used. At least 10 of the Model 1103 machines were made. The first Univac 1103A was shipped in September 1956. A total of about 20 of the 1103A machines were produced.